Hey gang, it's Brian from FX Billiards. Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to shoot a dynamic force follow shot. Before we get started with the force follow and exactly what that is, let's look at your follow shot. Follow shot is simple. You're making the cue ball follow the object ball. The problem is a lot of players can't shoot a decent follow shot. So what does that mean? If I'm playing the one and I need to get on the eight, which is all the way at the other end of the table and on the rail there, this is what I want to do. A very large number of players cannot send the cue ball down to follow that ball all the way to the other end of the table. And the problem is usually a very, very simple fix. Most players, when they shoot a draw shot, they have trouble with it because they don't hit the cue ball as low as they could be. They think if they hit it low, they're going to miss cue and the ball's going to fly off the table, but what's happening is they're hitting under the ball. Well, the same thing happens with your follow shot. In order to have a good follow shot, you have to hit the ball extremely high. You're hitting it almost at the very top of the ball and following through. Most players can't shoot that follow shot all the way down table because they're not hitting the ball high enough. So we hit this ball very high, good follow through, our cue ball with very little effort is going to roll all the way down table. It should be that easy. If you saw how soft I hit that, it should be that easy to get the ball to one end of the table to the other. And now when you can do that, we can get you ready for a legitimate force follow shot that you can use in games. Let's get started. I'm going to show you about five or six force follow shots, how to use them in games, and these five or six shots are going to give you hundreds of situations if you learn just these five or six shots. Here's a very simple example. We need to get down table for our eight ball. The angle that we have does not allow us to shoot a draw shot to come down here to get on this eight. We'd end up on the wrong side of the ball. So what we can do here is we can shoot a force follow shot, put a bunch of top spin on that ball, with a little bit of right hand English and we change the direction of that cue ball which wants to go in that direction, all of that top and all of that right gets us over here for this ball. If I didn't put the right hand English on it, the same problem would have occurred that I would have had with the draw shot and I would have ended up on this side of the table. So how do we put that much top and that much right hand English on this shot? It is all in your stroke, guys. If you do not follow through on your stroke, if you do not hit the ball with one fluid motion where your cue is accelerating as you reach that cue ball, it should hit its maximum speed just before you hit the cue ball. If you follow through on this, watch the motion of the cue ball. Again, top right hand English. That cue ball has top spin on it and it has right hand English on it and that's what gets it off of that rail. So the shot should look like this. Again, this time I'm not going to put any right hand English on it. I want you to see the path of our cue ball. So now without the right hand English, I still get down table. I know you guys are scared you're going to scratch. It's a very small area, four and a half inches here. Anyway. <laughs> We got our cue ball down table without the right hand English. What was the difference between the first one and, and the one I just showed you? It was all about our angle. Because we had so much topspin on it, we were actually able to change the trajectory of the cue ball so that it didn't bring us this way, but brought us this way. What if we're playing the one, we need to get on the three, the 10 is blocking that pocket. If we tap in the one too soft, we end up over here, no good. We tap it in too hard, we end up down here. If we try to shoot a draw shot or anything, forget about it, we're heading in the wrong direction. But what if we shoot our force follow shot here and force our cue ball to stay at this end of the table and drop into this zone? It's not that difficult, guys. Good follow shot, follow through on the shot. Our cue ball stalls, stays at that end of the table for us. The angle got us into the zone we wanted to be in. A lot of that travel distance, we're going to have a shot on the three. And those of you that don't like this shot on the three, don't realize you're out already. You shoot a follow shot here, 
high left hand English and you come around off of two rails and you're on the eight. Just like this. I think you would like this shot at the end of a game. So don't forget, you can use that stall in your favor. Let's look at something else. I talked to a lot of you who see me shoot shots like this. We're on the 12, we need to get on the 15. And we come off of three rails like this. Coming around the table, we get shape on this 15 that actually is going to put us automatic on our eight ball. It's not the lesson today, but you can see how easy this is. Now we have a straight in shot on the eight. But what I hear is Brian, I can't get around the table. How do I get over here? My cue ball stops here. It stops here. The problem is you're shooting a follow shot. This is a force follow shot. When you play this with high left, you have to follow through. You have to shoot through the ball. You have to try to keep your cue as level as possible. If you're jacked up, you're taking speed off your cue ball. Some of the side spin is going to help you get around the table. But if you're not making it, it's because you're shooting a follow shot and not a force follow. So get your stroke in there. Get yourself around the table. You can come around here all day. Your biggest problem will be traffic and not scratching in this pocket, but it is the correct shot either way. This is a very small target. Get over here, make this ball, and run out. A lot of these shots require English. You will need to put spin on the ball for the majority of the force follow shots that you're gonna learn. Anyone who shows you force follow shots and doesn't talk about English is doing you a disservice because by definition, we're shooting a force follow because we want our cue ball to cover a lot of territory. Well, you're out of feet at nine, okay? We need to cover 18, 20 feet sometimes. You can't get there without coming off of a rail and you can't get there in most cases without some type of English. So we are going to put our three ball in that pocket, get on our five ball that's down here. We're gonna, this is a simulation of a nine ball run out. My cue ball is gonna come off of here, here, get down table, give me perfect position on this five ball. Shot looks like this. High right hand English, good follow through guys. We have decent shape on this five. Most of you are out from here. You got stop, stop, stop. You're on the eight, you're gonna run out. Anything other than the shot we took you probably don't get on this five and you certainly don't get on this five in a way that you're gonna run out. This is my favorite force follow shot. Just doesn't come up often enough. But we're playing nine ball. We're on the two. We don't have a shot on the two. We also have a cluster here. We're probably not gonna run out, but we're very fortunate the nine ball is sitting in the pocket. That is our target of primary interest. We don't have to worry about running out from here. The best in the world aren't going to run out from here. They might find a safety, but there aren't a lot of safeties on this table right now. We could shoot a force follow shot straight through this cluster with a shot that looks like this and play that nine ball. Now, you may have noticed from some angles, I did not shoot straight through the cluster. I had a little bit of an angle on the shot. The only way you're going to learn exactly where you need to hit those clusters to actually follow through and get down table to another ball or another position on the table is to practice different clusters, different angles, but it's all force follow, no English on that shot at all. The other problem that you have is that our cue ball is gonna have a bunch of top spin and if you hit that ball that's sitting in the pocket solid, you may follow it into the pocket. But this is not a concern if you aim for the wedge on this side of the table, and I'm talking about this empty space between the ball and the cushion. That's gonna be difficult with all of the other things that are going on, but that will keep you from scratching. But guess what? If I scratch on that shot, big deal. I wasn't going to be out. I was gonna be stuck trying to play some kind of safety off of that two ball. 
most people aren't going to win from there. You will because you're going to shoot that force follow right through the cluster. So experiment with those and see how you make out. We just touched the tip of the iceberg as far as what you can do with a good force follow shot. Keep in mind when you're practicing these, practice with your left and right hand English because the majority of the force follows that you're going to use are going to require left or right hand English. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit me in the comments and let me know what you think and have a great day.